If it's coded safe, that's that's a big thing. So if it's coded safe, the inspector would probably get me on stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. The inspector would would tear you up for that because it's not safe. You know, he's right. got to look out for a future. Like I'm saying, you got to plan for the future. You never know what could happen. You know. Right. Hey, welcome back. I'm Kelly with Signature Solar and today we are examining a vital topic for our DIYers and our installers alike. How do you prepare a solar system for an official inspection? If you're passionate about sustainable living or curious about solar installations, this one's for you. If this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future insights. For our returning solar enthusiast, it's great to have you back. Make sure to leave a comment below if you find anything helpful in this video. We're here today at a Clayton home that has been set up to be powered by an interactive hybrid inverter known as an 18K PV. We have connected 21 panels coming into our inverter as two independent arrays, as well as two all-weather wall mount PowerPro batteries. Now, for our purposes today, let's say that I am that DIY person who has worked really hard to do my research I put in months of hard work, planning, and honestly money into this system. I have finally received all the items I ordered and completed all of the installation myself, with some help from some friends, of course. Those batteries are 300 pounds. I'm feeling both very excited and nervous at the same time. It's finally time for me to call an inspector out. One more bill, and I hope it's the last. So, to make sure everything is set up correctly, I've asked my friend David from EG4 Electronics to come out and look over this whole system very carefully and completely before I have the actual inspector come out. David, thanks so much for being here today and being so willing to help me out. David is going to make sure everything is code compliant and safe, and maybe even offer me some tips and tricks to help make my setup even better. Hopefully, having David walk me through this setup will offer some valuable insights to our solar community as well. So David, where do we start? All right, so anytime we're messing with any kind of electrical thing and it's, it's, everything's hot on the system, you have it running, so we're gonna go ahead and put our safety gear on. So I see you got your gloves and glasses here. Great idea. I love it, I love it. So we'll go ahead while you're putting those on, we'll start from left to right. So we wanna make sure that when we're looking at the initial system, there's just no obstructions or anything like going from outside the wall, free hanging, not straps, stuff like this. Uh, we can't have this, that needs to be in the ground, you know. If a little kid comes around, you know, playing hide and seek, come around, they could, they could fall and severely injure themselves, you know. We gotta, we gotta watch out for stuff like that. The pipes down here, that are over here, they can be free hanging. Uh, it's just my personal opinion that they would be in the ground, but um, that's completely fine. Uh, these pipes back here, they need to be connected. Uh, you see how there's separation, it's not level. They need to be glued. There needs to be a strap within 18 inches of this box. Right here, so they have that, that's good. As well as a Meyer sub uh, connecting this MA. It's my personal opinion that you put one on the bottom as well as all the sides, but people can argue about the, the bottom. But me, I like to do it on the bottom. Just makes it look good, all clean and flush. Right here, you know, you got a, you got a couple pipes that are out free hanging, you know. We need to, we need to strap these up, make sure they're they're tight, but we're, we're gonna rerun that, make it look good, you know, put it all code. So in between the uh, meter and the inverter, there needs to be a lockable visible disconnect in place of this pass-through panel. You can see here that there's no breakers. There's just lugs on the top and bottom. They're using this as a disconnect, but uh, there needs to be a visible lockable disconnect, a knife switch on the side with the, the lock on it. So we can completely isolate ourselves from the grid in case we have to work on anything. We wanna make sure we're completely safe if, you know, I'm working on the system in the future, or if you need to check something, or, you know, plan for the future, you know, this, this is a mobile home. You might always be living here, you know, next family after you. We gotta, we gotta plan for the future, you know. When we're installing this, we need to make sure that we cut these off. Uh, we don't want anybody hitting their head on these. These are very important, so we gotta cut these off. This manhole right here, we need to make sure we have at least three feet coverage, that uh, nothing's obstructing it. So this pipe, this would be in the way, this gutter is pushed a little too close. So you're uh, saying there needs to be three feet above the top of that manhole? Yeah, we need to make sure we have at least three feet clearance of this manhole in case you're working on anything or underneath the house. We need to make sure that we have at least three foot from this uh, water faucet so, you know, the system itself can't be under here in case, you know, water starts spraying out. This is electrical equipment, so we can't have this water faucet here. This is, this is water, right? We have electrical systems, so we got to be careful with that, you know? I missed that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's close, but you know, in case you have a water hose that's leaking, you know, it's spraying everywhere. We can't have that. Bad news. Yeah, yeah, we got to make sure, you know, everything's, that's where waterproofing comes in play because if everything's still tight, then, you know, we can cross your fingers, but we can't have that. You know, we got to make sure everything's waterproofed. You see these set screw uh, MAs right here? These aren't waterproof. These are indoors. So, you know, Meyer okay. sub, like we were talking about over here, make sure it's all waterproof and has a, has a gasket and seal. There needs to be a compression fitting uh, outdoor compression fitting on this, as well as you can either have a mineral -like strap strapping this together, or you would need to make it flush against the wall and come off with the offset. But as you can see here, that's not very, not very straight, very good. Couldn't just put sealant around here and be okay? No, no, we don't wanna, we don't wanna jerry-rig anything. We don't wanna, we don't wanna break any NEC codes because if it's, if it's code, it's safe. That's, that's a big thing. So if it's code, it's safe. The yeah, inspector would probably get me on stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The inspector would, would tear you up for that because it's not safe, you know. He's right. got to look out for a future, like I'm saying. you got to plan for the future. You never know what could happen, you know. Right. So we want to make sure everything's really waterproof. So we can see, you know, this, this seal is there. It's, it's cut a little short. Uh, if we had, you know, like Meyer subs or something with a gasket around that to seal that off to make sure it's completely waterproof and no rain's going to get in it at all. All right, so when we get in here, we need to make sure everything's phased correctly. Uh, we need white tape on this. We need uh, green tape on that. Uh, we can't have these double lugs. We need, uh, we need to come off with a breaker and completely isolate this 18K because we're, we're coming off with double lugs and we're landing into our grid for our 18K. We can't have that. We need, to, we need to make sure we can completely isolate that. That's where that disconnect also comes into play. That's, that's very important stuff. So you can see that there's already a corrosion building up from these not having any kind of gasket or Meyer subs connected to them. That's why we, we gotta make sure that they're waterproof. It's butted up against this uh, gutter and because it's butted up against this gutter, because we have a gutter, uh, this now becomes a, a, a top entrance so you would need a Meyer sub in between this inverter. As of right now, they just have chase nipples, which for inside that would be acceptable to an extent, but because we are outside, uh, we wanna make sure everything's weatherproof and sealed tight with the gasket. So phasing is really important. I see uh, it's on here, but we need to make sure that's taped down for at least uh, six inches on the phase tape. And when we're, when we're installing these battery terminals, they like to fray. They really do. I mean, that's just DC stranded wire. It, it happens to the best of us. But we just really want to make sure we do a good quality job, which the inside of this panel looks really good. So good job on that. But we just need to make sure a couple things need to change on like phasing, make sure it's down all the way. Uh, the, the, the wire that's stripped back is a little far back. You know, we wanna make sure we torque everything to spec too. That's very, very important. Torque and spec is a very crucial part. We need to make sure we mark these off so we know that we torqued them and that they're, they're done correctly. Uh, other than that, everything else looks real good. We have this right here. You know, when we drill on the outside, we want to make sure, you know, everything's waterproof. Uh, this down here isn't waterproof, down up through here. We need to run that through and put that in a box, even though this, this, this connect right here, this is an outdoor rated, uh, outdoor rated rapid shutdown, but we want to make sure it's waterproof underneath and to the entrance of the, the unit itself. It's very important. Wow, David, thank you so much for this incredible insight in this walkthrough that you've given us. It's so eye-opening to see the biggest issues that we need to address before the official inspection. And not just for compliance, but also to enhance the overall efficiency and safety of the system. This has been super helpful. Of course, you know, like you said, safety is a big thing and we all got to watch each other's back. We got to plan for the future. We got we to gotta make sure everything's co-compliant and at the end of the day, we're gonna make it look good, we're gonna make it safe, we're gonna make it exactly what we want out of here and we're gonna make it good. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited, I appreciate it. Of course. And to all of our viewers, this is just the beginning. Join us next time when David and his team will be back to walk us through the fixes for each of these issues. We're not just going to repair them, we'll dive into the details of why each fix is important, ensuring our system is not only compliant, but also optimized for peak performance, as well as focused on minimizing maintenance costs. Remember, whether you're a DIY enthusiast or a seasoned solar professional, understanding the nuances of solar installation is a key to harnessing the full potential of solar energy. So make sure you subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode in this series. You won't want to miss it. I'm Kelly with Signature Solar. And I'm David with EG4. And we believe 
that solar is for everyone. See you next week.